Colin McPherson. Um, and yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. I love writing, everything around writing. I'm a book coach, a book mentor. I love telling stories. I'm a griot. Um, I'm also Commonwealth Short Story Prize winner 2023 for the Caribbean region and globally. And I'm the first Jamaican to win this prestigious award. I love telling stories, as I've said, and as a storyteller, I like to provoke thought. I like to have people engage. I like people to reflect on what I've written and the life stories that I tell because they are um, compared and comparable to how we're living our lives before and after, well, before and now and, and into the future. So I write across genres and, and my, my main aim is to enable readers to enjoy what I'm writing. And like I said, for them to have a, 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 an introspection in terms of, of the stories that are being told and putting them into a protagonist's shoes and so on and so forth. Oh, wow. Right. Where did the idea come from? The idea came from, because it's funny, as a storyteller, to a great extent, you're a historian, and I love history. And so I, I, I'm, I think one of, the, one of the things that happened in terms of my writing journey is that I started to reflect a lot more on the African diaspora. And when I say African diaspora, I mean black people who are outside of Africa. And those stories, because they're, they're, they're rich, uh, there's a lot of those stories which have been told that a lot of people don't know about. So Okahi was one of those stories. I came across uh, an image of the number of black towns that were raised to the ground through white supremacy, through racism, and so on and so forth. And, and in 19th, 20th century, so it's not too far ago, in the, US, in the United States of America. And I thought that these stories aren't known. We may know of the one or two like Tulsa's, um, you know, that, that is probably, and Rosewood, we may know of those two, but there's probably about 20 or 30 towns that are actually black towns that were burned to the ground. And Okahi was one of those towns, even though it was half black and half, half, half African-American and half white. There was an incident that took happen, that happened, whereas the, the whites actually raised up and then raised the, the black, the black side of part of town. And I thought, because it's, it's an occurrence town in Florida that now exists today, but a lot of people would know the history of around Okahi. So, so that's the reason why I wrote that part of the story. And I find that I'm writing a lot more in regards to those stories that aren't known. And, and people, are, and people are, are readers are engaging with them. And that's why I guess Okahi won um, last year. The first time I started writing, growing up in the Caribbean, you are encouraged to write from primary school. So you write essays, poems, compositions. And, and that's where it actually started. But I didn't know I was a writer until I left Jamaica, actually. I went back to the UK where I was born, but I grew up in Jamaica. And and it was whilst I was, even through high school, I didn't do any writing. So it's only when I went to the UK, I was working in in, in civil service. And, and I started out doing poetry because somebody wanted a personalized poem. And they came to me and asked me if I knew anyone. And I said, I could try my hand at it. And I said exactly how it started. I did them a personalized poem. All the, my other colleagues in, in the in building started to learn about it. So, oh, could you do a poem for me? I've got a loved one. I've got a birthday, I've got anniversary, whatever it was. And, and what I used to do is I used to take characteristics of the individual who they wanted the, the poem for and then created a poem. So it was personalized in that sense. Then got a card and cut and paste and, and, and sold it to them. So I was able to make money on the side while I was doing that. But so that's how, it, that's how it actually started. And from there, it was a matter of, I said, ah, I'm good at this. Oh, you know, let me continue doing a lot of poetry, which I did, and that's how I started. I started out doing a lot of poetry, writing, writing a lot of po poems, and my first poetry book was in 2006, um, after I, had, I went through a particular experience, and, and it came that, you know, what, what, what was I good at? But I was also doing it as a hobby. I didn't even know I was going to do it into business until very later on um, in, in, in my writing career. But it began in Jamaica, in primary school, and then it does, and it blossomed, when I, when I became a young adult. Oh, wow. Thanks for the question, Willie. Um, how many times did I drop? Well, the, my writing process is very simple. Um, I, I'll, free, I'll freestyle. A lot of my writing is freestyle. I may have an idea may just pop into my head. And I said, you know what, I'm going to write a story about this. Or I may have an observation of something. I said, there's a story that needs to be told. And one of the things I love doing is people watching. So I, I try to make the Okahi in particular, the protagonist to be an African Caribbean, African American man on, on their journey through through the, the, the boonies in, in Florida, so to speak. And so writing it freestyle is is, is is on a creative way, I guess, in terms of the story that comes out. So it's only after I've done the like first draft, then I use read aloud, which enables me to then go through and read alone is basically on, on your laptop that 
can recite or this speech. I'll take the speech. And basically, that's what I do. So I, I write it up a first draft, and then I use read aloud to basically go through and then see where the gaps are, see where the grammar, the grammar doesn't sound correct. So it probably took me about two or three drafts, actually, to tell the truth. Um, but I, I didn't realize how powerful the story was until I sent it into the Commonwealth. <laughs> but so, it, so the story itself, yeah, it took about two or three drafts. But um, yeah, I, and I didn't know how powerful the story actually was until until the Commonwealth said so I was shortlisted. So, um, but yeah, it's it's it, it, it's so so I, nowadays I'm writing longer pieces, I'm writing a few novels. So again, I, I try to chop it up in, in terms of chapters and then go through the chapter using read aloud to make sure that the, the, the theme is still there, the under, underline the theme and the grammar and any scenes that I need to put in, what I need to take out, what I need to change. So so again, so hopefully by the time I finish the, my, my my other novels, because I've written one before but I haven't, I haven't, I haven't published it, um, when I finish the next novel then. Um, a proofreader can probably go through it and, and see what what how can be tied even more than what what I've tried to do with it. But I, yeah, so it took to me about two or three tries with um Okahi to get it right. I write because I um, I'm a storyteller first and foremost. I love the fact that I've been blessed with a talent, um, which I again I only came to the realization like in the past 10, 15 years if that's if that's the case. Um, and I love telling stories. I'm, I'm a historian, and, and I think those are the things that, you know, it's, it's sometimes you don't know what you're destined to become until you become it. And I didn't know I was destined to become a writer until all everything came together. Because when I left high school, one of the subjects that I had, two of the subjects I had was history and English and geography, funny enough. And and those, those are the things that have now played out in terms of my adult life, because I love geography, I love history. And I love English in terms of writing, so so the, everything has everything came together. Even though I didn't know it at the time, when I was younger, so I think I was destined to write, to be a writer. Um, I think um, I I and, and on the back of that, like I said, I love telling stories. Um, I love observing people. I love seeing what happens in the world in terms of current affairs. I love history, like I said. I love to think about what the future can be whole based on what's, what's happened in the past. So those things fascinate me, and, I, and I'm, I'm invigorated by them, and I have an energy and enthusiasm to tell stories based on those things, you know? So what's happened in the past, where we are now, what can happen in the future? And and that's and that's why I, I just love writing and, and, love, and telling stories. And, and funny enough, there's something that I wrote years ago only for it to come to pass and at that time. I can't remember what it was, but I know I'd written something. And then when I when somebody read it, they said, oh, you know, you wrote about this one before. I said, yeah, well, you know, there you go. Because based on what had happened before, where we, at, where we were at the time, and what can happen in the future. So for me, writing is is, is about telling stories, but it's, it's, it's a lot more than that. There's, there's a lot more that's involved in terms of trying to get people to, to understand, you know what I mean, this thing we call life and this place that we live called Earth, you know. And all of that goes with it, you know, all the ramifications, all the politics, everything that goes with it. I try to tell it in, in such a way that people can understand, you know, people can can engage, engage with it and people can, our readers can can have an affinity with, you know. So so my story, like I said, Okohi is one of those stories which which basically opened a lot, a lot of eyes in regards to what had happened in the 19th, 20th century in regards to black towns in, in America. Because, like, again, the feedback that I had received when it had won, a lot of people didn't know. Um, about that history uh, of America, a lot of people didn't know. Um, so, so th those are the things that I love telling and opening eyes and and having people reflect and un and get to understand or learn something new that they didn't know before. The best part, Ray. Oh, thank you. Uh, the best part of the writing process is telling the story. You know, th that's the best part. The best part of the writing process is telling the story. See how we can shape an idea into into a narrative where people can engage with, people can digest. And again, like I said, provoke thought, have reflection, that kind of stuff. So for me, it's telling the story, you know, the ability to just get an idea and just see it become a story is, is the most exciting part of, of, of the writing process for me. It's, it's yeah, I, I love that. Just taking a simple idea and creating something out of it, you know? Um, and it can, it can be anything, it can be a single image, it can be a, an action, a single action. It can be, like I said, a lot of people watching, a lot of, you know, not, you know, just, just watching people and, and 
wondering about people's backgrounds and 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 you know and trying to form a narrative around that and the way they dress and all that kind of stuff. So you know everything everything around us is, is everything around us has, has have stories. So so for me, it's a process of telling that story. I love doing that, and, and that's why I freestyle because. Even though I may have a, an, an outline or a, or a framework to what the kind of story that I want to write, majority of the time it's just a loose framework. I love, I just love freestyling because you don't, you don't really can be inspired from what can come out in the story, you know. Um, um, a, a lot of writers, you know, tend to tend to write in terms of a structure, which is good and great for them. But for me, I just love to freestyle because that's how you get creative juices flowing. You know, mm. you don't know what can inspire you and what comes out at the other end. Uh, funny enough. Because uh, I didn't grow up knowing this, I, I grew up as a you know getting form, going to formal room, you know, university and degrees and work and employed and all that kind of stuff. And it's only I think the the, the beauty in terms of the time that we're living in is that the, all right, the, you know, there's the good and bad about it, but the internet to, to a great extent has enabled creativity much more so, and, and people have been able to to create because of the internet to to great, because technology has allowed people to tap into parts of that they, they knew they had, but they didn't know how to get it out, you know? So, um, and, and more so to many people, more than us, just one or two. So I think the, inter- the internet has, has enabled that to, to, to explore over the past 10 years. Um, so, so, so the time that we're living in is, is the best time for creatives, I would say, even in regards to time of the Renaissance or, you know, this time that we're living in. Because more people can now tap into being creative because of the internet, you know? So, um, so I think another time that we're living in now is, is the best time in humankind because of that. Alrighty, uh, good question. Um, new writers. One thing I, I, I always say is to, the, the main thing for new writers, I say, is to read other writers. You know, read other books. As a matter of fact, read anything. Newspaper, magazines, you know, just, just read. Because the more you consume, the more you'll be able to tell it in your storytelling. I would also to say to young writers also, because I was fortunate enough earlier on in my career to have a, a few mentors, um, one of who is a, one of who is a, um, a New York bestseller, um, another one who's also a, a very successful African-American um, writer, and, and they enabled me to, to start it. So as a matter of fact, they saw in me what I didn't see for myself. So, they, so they're the ones who were able to, to identify me being a writer based, based on a few, a few stories that I wrote. So I'd also say having a, having a mentor is good. Um, it, and it, it helps to, to get you to hone your talent and to, and to and have that self-belief. Um, I would also say be passionate about it because writing is something where you can like it, but if you just like it, that's not enough. <laughs> if that makes sense. You have to love it. If you love telling stories, if you love helping other people, if you love sharing, then, yeah, writing, you have to have that, I think. I think that's, that's what makes the difference in terms of just a writer and a writer, if that makes sense. You can have an average writer and you can have a great writer or a good writer. I think for the good and great writers, it's about love for it rather than us liking it. So I, I would say have a passion for it. If you have a passion for it, then definitely um, just write, you know, just write. And as you go along, you'll find that. And, and for myself, I enter loads of competitions. I don't stop entering competitions. I love competitions. And I always, I've always been entering competitions because I want to see how good my writing actually is. And so based on that, I always encourage writers, and especially if you don't have confidence in yourself or have confidence in writing, just to just to enter competition and see what happens and continue writing. That's honing your craft, doing courses. Um, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube, for example, that helps. You know, there's books, there's, there's many things. Well, like I said, the main thing is having a mentor, but also having that self-belief. And then if you're going to write something, start simple. Like I said, I started with poetry, you know, you don't have to start with poetry. You can just start with a short story or flash fiction, actually, which is limitation of words and, and try 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 honing yourself with number a limited number of words. Um, flash fiction is one of, is one of the best forms of telling stories that you can ever have because you have to tell a story within a hundred words or two fifty. You know what I mean? That that helps hone a, a young writer also. So I'd also encourage writers, young writers, to to, to consider doing that. You know, do flash fiction. Test yourself, enter competitions, see what happens. Have a mentor, um, and and just keep writing. Um, but and, and reading, reading other writers, because I also do a lot of reading when I can. If I'm not writing a story, if I'm not writing a book, 
but um, but I do try to read read other other writers, and I and a lot of my writing has been influenced by other writers, even though I have my own style of writing. A lot of what I I, I write, and even Okohi actually has elements of that in terms of the part parts within it, which I borrowed from my African American, you know, star of writer friend, and and he seen that he was inspired, and he was we laughed about it, but I said he inspired me to write that bit like like how he would do. Um, so so that is important. So um, yeah. So those are tips that I would give, and in terms of a young writer. But you gotta, and the main thing though is just keep writing. You know, keep just keep writing, keep writing. That's the main thing. Keep writing and putting it out there. That we can write and keep it to ourselves, but write and put it out there and and, and see what happens. You know, I just I just wrote okay, yeah, I didn't had no idea. I didn't write with intention. I remember I entered Commonwealth two times as Writer's Award, I think it was, and then hit seven times as the Commonwealth Short Story Prize. So in total, nine times. Um, so I so I, so I, I just kept writing and entering. I didn't know I was going to win it one day, but I did <laughs> eventually um, because I just, I, just, I just love writing and telling stories. So they just never know. You know, they just never know. So um, so that's what I would say. I would encourage any young writer who would wish to, um, to write. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I read, I read. Um, I read, I write. So there's Colin Chandler, who's like I said, a mentor of mine. Um, read, read, read William Frederick Cooper, my African American friend, who's written, who's also a, a, a literary prize winner, um, um, very well known. The, I also read um, James Patterson. I love James Patterson stuff. I love Lee Child and his Jack Reacher series. Um, Stephen King, of course. Um, who else? Um, um, Jamaica Kincaid, um, so Richard Wright. So there's quite a number of, of other people that I do read, um, um, which have, like I said, help with, have helped with my writing. Um, um, yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, and I continue to read that, that because, again, like I said, you just never know what can inspire you from that writer. Um, but it's, it's also, and, and like I said, it's also just to see how they tell their stories, um, borrowed stuff in terms of, how they were probably, probably uh, have a plot scene or, you know, but, um, but you still have your own voice, you know, you still have your, but it's, it's, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm inspired by, I'm inspired by all of those. And, and, and I'm more, it's just, it's like I can't read off the top of my head, <laughs> you know, um, but reading, I love reading, you know, when I can, because I tell you, cause I'm in, I'm in the middle of, I'm um, writing a number of novels now, you know, because of interest. Um, so yeah, so, and I'm trying to get those completed, but so I try to read in between it's, is a challenge, but I try to. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think it's it's about the emotion aspect. Because when, when I started out writing, especially after, after, like the poetry, after I did the poetry, and I moved on to short storytelling first, I was writing, a, I was very descriptive. A lot of nar- narration around description, but nothing about protagonists in terms of Emotions and I, and I was when I, when um, I had entered a competition while I was living in Canada, and one of the things came out said it was a good story, but there was no engagement in terms of emotion. So when I write no ideas, I try to find ways of talking about the protagonist, and it's like a it's, it's something called a three sixty. So you 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 look at the protagonist in a three sixty view. So you're looking at the environment, you know, you're looking in terms of the history of the protagonist, in terms of the backstory, but then you're looking at also the individual. So you're looking at who they are, um, how, how everything has influenced them from the backstory to the environment and how those emotions are played out within the, within them. And then the situation that they would probably find themselves in and how they then bring, it, bring out the emotion. So, the, so, so, so now my writing more so than before, and I guess, again, just referring to Okoye since that's, you know, is that, um, is that um, Okoye, people could engage with the with the protagonist because of the emotional element of it, and there's aspects of the, the of, of the protagonist which I had 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 drawn on in terms of history. So, for example, he was a, an ex-soldier, um, had, had struggled with PTSD. He came from the Caribbean because he talked about it, the relationship with his, his, his grandparents in the Caribbean. Um, talked about his his family in regards to the food, so the, the food element that came in in regards to the, 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 the fried chicken, for example. Um, and, and also in regards to the setting um, of, of Okoye itself and trying to create a family. And, and then also the historical aspect of, of looking back in terms of ancestors. So there's elements that I have to create of 360 
so that then that would draw the reader in, into that emotive part of the, of, of the protagonist. And that is where I focus a lot more now. But the description is still there. So it's just that it's a role of the protagonist, um, where whatever scene they may, def- they may find themselves in, and then drawing in all the, the other elements in terms of the history, the backstory, in terms of the environment, and even the politics. So, so, you, so all those kind of things that come. So again, to, referring to Okahi, the politics of, of of racism and and that kind of stuff, you know. So, 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 and proof with police brutality of all, all those all those things um, create create a, the, the reader to put themselves in the reader in the protagonist's shoes. So then, and and have an emotive relationship with the protagonist. Uh, so that so a lot of my writing now is around the emotive. And, and the protagonists within that time and what they're going through and then bringing in different elements. Well, like I said, I, I had entered how many times before. Um, as a writer, my main, my main core is always telling stories. I love telling stories. So, so, so like, for example, I did Bridport and I, 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 I got to award in a bursary. I haven't won it yet. So that's, just, that's as far as I got with, with Bridport. But that doesn't mean I've given up. I haven't given up. I'm going to win Bridport. I am going to win Bridport. Um, um, and it's the same, it's the same thought. I, and, it's, and it's on the back of, of just basically um, of that, realizing when I look at my writing career, my writing journey, I notice there's been a progression in terms of recognition and awards. And, and it, it's continued. And, and it's about consistency and persistence. So I, I, I think from, from that, that, that standpoint, I just entered the card. I love telling stories. And like I said before, if I win, I win. If I don't, I'm still going to enter. You know, so that's that's my attitude. And and eventually, one day, I will win. <laughs> but, but, but my intention is to tell stories, you know, and, and continue to tell stories, and I'll continue to upload and, and different things. So so for me, and, 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 and 2023, I did not enter to win. I just entered because I love, I want this competition, and I tell love telling stories. And it so happened that I won, so... So that's 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 how I approach it. I, I I I now, on the back of that, I can say any competition I'm going to, I'm going to win it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, because I know my storytelling is of such that you know it's it's appreciated in that sense. So so um so yeah, it's made me more term, determined to to continue to uh, to share and continue to to enter competitions and see, and see what happens. Enormously. I would say, enormously, um, I would say, first off, I was invited to Buckingham Palace last year for a Royal Commonwealth Society event, which, you know I mean, the majority of people, 99.9% of people haven't been inside. You know, there's only a select few, probably about 1% of that. So I'm one of, I'm one of the 1% who had the opportunity to be invited by Royal Commonwealth Society to their event and to go into, and to go into Buckingham Palace. Now, just stay at the front and take a picture. To actually go inside, and obviously meeting Queen Camilla and having a discussion with her, which is very, which is an interesting story. I would tell I was going to just look at me. I had missed two flights heading to London for this event, two, and it's a lot of complication in terms of me getting from Jamaica to to, to the UK. But anyway, on the day of the event is when I came into London. Coming and going across the Green Park, my suitcase wheel broke, so I'm dragging my suitcase. Yeah. Oh, and I had to change at the airport. So I changed at the airport, dragging my soup, broken suitcase all the way to Buckingham Palace gates. And when I reached, I was early actually, which is which is fascinating. I was, like I said, I was rushing around, missed two flights, and I ended up being early anyway. Get to the gate, and the policeman says to me, "Oi, mate, you moving in?" I said, "No, I'm not moving in. I'm just coming for an event." <laughs> and it's okay, so we're laughing, right? So anyway, so so I got, I'm the only one that's suitcase broke. I'm the only one who came. Like there's people from all over the world coming to this event, to this event. And so going through now, you know, had to wait at a particular time before they can allow you to enter. So you can't even got there early. I still have to wait outside with my broken luggage. So then get to go in and they search my my, my, my luggage inside that, and I have a big buckle of izumiyaki. And the policeman said. That's a big box of easy miyaki, mate. I said, yeah. I said, yes, it is, isn't it? I was like, I was like, can I have it? I said, no, you can't have it. And so anyway, so I had a little banter. Um, and he said, so, so what? And he asked me again. I said, no, I just stepped off the plane in Heathrow. I'm just here for this event. And so they let me in. 
And and like I said, it's fascinating actually going inside and seeing going upstairs and going into this massive room, all the paintings on the wall. Um, because like I said, not many people have that opportunity. And and then obviously the, then they have a presentation for the for young people who had won the Royal Commonwealth Society's prize, writing prize. And we had a presentation, and the Queen came and she did that thing. And the thing, the funny thing was, when she started to have the meet and greet, she started from one end of the room, and was walking through to the other end. So my intent, I didn't intend to, I did not intend to have a discussion with her or anything. I just said, I'm, yeah, you know, I'm representing Jamaica, and I'm here because I think I was, the, I was the only Caribbean person there actually. Everyone else was from from Africa, and then it so happened that I saw a, a soldier in dress uniform, and I went up to him and I started to have a discussion. I said. You're the only one here in uniform. I said, there's a reason for that. I said, yeah. And so I, I probably ended up only probably being the first person to speak to. And I said, yeah, I'm the Queen's actuarian or like a military attache. So anywhere she goes, he goes. And I said, oh, that's fascinating. So I started talking about the British Army. And then he said, have you met the Queen? I said, no. I said, all right, come on then. So because so, you're not allowed to any pictures of, of cameras of, of uh, and you can't afford anything. So I said, come on then. So went over and, and, and said, Your Majesty, this, this gentleman has come from Jamaica, you know, that would like to meet you. And so, so, I, so I ended up having about a minute conversation. Said, oh, you're from Jamaica. We love Jamaica. I said, okay, everybody loves Jamaica. <laughs> everybody loves Jamaica. And so, so, and so it started, she said, oh, you must encourage young people to write and get them interested in writing. I said, yeah, definitely. Um, and, um, and, and, and that was it. And then a couple of years later, Someone comes, oh, you're on Instagram. What do you mean? So you're on the Royal Family's Instagram page. I'm like, so, what? Because remember, there's a lot of they have their own PR team. They're taking so they're taking hundreds of pictures. So I go into the Royal Family's Instagram page. Lo and behold, there's two public pictures on there. And my, my, mine and the Queen is one of them. I was like, wow, look at that. You could not write it any better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so that opportunity came to me, and like I said, that everything that has transpired, being on TV, me in the in the um, being in the newspaper, being on the radio, um, having in, um, international partnerships um, to come because I got to go to Africa to do some work, um, I got to go to all the Caribbean islands to do some work, um, yeah, um, I'm I'm involved with a, a, a international film festival happening this month here in Jamaica. Um, I'm also a part of a massive diaspora conference for Jamaican diaspora. I'm, I'm involved. I'm a panelist for that. So a lot of opportunities. Have, oh, and the most important thing is, I've, I've, which not many people know, but now they will know now, is that I have been approached by a UK film company to take Okohi to become a TV series or a, a film. So at the moment, they're just trying to get the documentation sorted, and then we got where that's concerned. So that's that's so I can't you can't get no better than that <laughs> you know you know can't get can't get no better than that so so that's what the writing journey has been so far and 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 I have had publishers and agents also interested in longer pieces so that's what I'm working on at the moment so it's been a phenomenal journey it's been a phenomenal journey. I'm open. Just invite me. You know what I mean? I put I got my passport. I'm ready. My bag's packed already. Madam Pakaridi, Madam Pakaridi. I just, just, just I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be. I'm heading to. I'm doing funny enough. I'm doing some an online thing with Zambia next week. I've got Botswana and South Africa. I think South Africa. I'm supposed to be heading there at the end of the year for a workshop seminar, and Botswana also, um, and 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 Zambia. No, the Zambia. I think there's, some, there's one other. So I'm I'm open. I'm I'm ready. I'm I'm I've, I've said, you know, I mean, once the connections can be made and negotiations done, I'm 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 ready and ready and ready and ready and willing and willing and ready and yeah, wait. I really want to go there to do some work. I really want to go there and do some work. You know. So yeah. So um, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm I'm excited because I can see it happening. I'm enthusiastic and yeah. Yeah. It's just a matter of making it happen. You know. Wow, it's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, question and answer session. I hope I've answered all your questions. Thank you for the support. Thank you for reading the story, Okohi. Um, um, and I hope that, um, yeah, that you'll see a lot more work from me in the future. And, yeah, and, and, and support the finalists for this year, too, actually. Uh, it's, 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 they're, they're fascinating stories, I'm sure. I haven't read all of them. But I'm, um, but I'm sure that they'll, they'll, they'll be great stories also. So, um, and make sure you register for the ceremony 
for the 26th of June. Uh, online with the registration that you need to do online come up foundation june 26th the ceremony will be on yeah make sure you're there and, and yeah, i'll be there i will be there i will be there i'll be there supporting so make sure you do too thank you my name Paul McPherson again and yeah thank you and see you see you around the corner